Today the blue cat went to the grocery store and he wanted to buy some tea. Now the teas were all the same price. How do we think about which one he would choose? Maybe we're a business and we're trying to think about what teas to offer and at what prices and in what way. And we want to be able to model how this consumer makes his or her choices. So one way of thinking about it, in fact, what actually happened is the blue cat went in and he said, I want, my first thing I care about is teas should not be in a round container. So this is my least preferred option. Then he said, okay, uh, you know, for me, it's really important that a teas container be mostly white. So I prefer these two to this one. And then uh, I don't know between this one, but the second thing I think about, the, third, the first thing was the shape of the container. The second was the color of the container. If the, if the, the th third thing I care about is, okay, w how big is the container? And this, he yeah, I said, aha, this container is bigger than this container, so I choose this T, okay? This is actually one way that businesses uh, and consultants model people's preferences. They think about these decision trees, which in economics would correspond approximately to something we call lexicographic preferences. Now, so they only focus on one attribute to, uh, unless there's a tie, and then we move on to other attributes. Okay, this is completely opposite the way that economists usually think about modeling preferences. We normally think that we go into the store and we, we say, all right, how do I value these things? Well, they have many attributes which I'm willing to trade off one another. So this one is more herbal. This one is bigger. So I, I like, so then I'll, I'll put a, a sign of value to these different, based on its different attributes. And you might've heard of utility functions. And I'll say, okay, well, this one is, is, has a bigger box. But actually, I think this one, even though it's a smaller box, it's got more different ingredients, which I like better. So those weigh against each other, and I will choose this one. Now, this is something that we're going to cover in a very abstract way and then applied in this module. So what I want to explain to you is the sorts of things we're going to be covering in this module. So one of the first themes we're going to be covering is preferences. Now, this is an expression you may have seen before, it's called a preference operator. So if I put something on this side, A, and something else on this side, B, I'm saying A is at least as good as B. I either prefer A to B or I'm indifferent between the two. Okay, and the first topic we're going to be dealing with extensively is the idea of preferences as well as choice. So th note, those two things are not necessarily the same. It could be that I decide I prefer this to this but for some reason I choose the green one. We're not gonna necessarily rule that out initially. Okay, so the idea of preferences and choices is that goods have all sorts of characteristics. We could think of them in a three-dimensional space, and we're going to think about rules that might assign orderings to which is preferred to what, or perhaps indifferences. We might see things like indifference curves and indifference spaces. And then we're gonna move on to choice. Uh, given people's preferences, they will also have constraints. You know, this tea might just be way out of my price range. I, this is more, costs more than my income. I can't choose it. So we're going to get to the choice problems. And we're dealing with this very abstractly, but it will, it's a way that actually becomes really uh, relevant when we try to model choice empirically and when we consider behavioral economics and we consider the idea that people may not always, people's preferences may not have the the sort of easy properties that we, find, that we think are rational or that we think are consistent. And people's choices may not always necessarily be in their own interest. So the idea of having these foundations allows us to relax it in this way, in, in interesting ways that are relevant to business and marketing. Um, so the first thing we're gonna deal with is preferences and choices. Um, the second thing, this is gonna lead to consumer demand, so you might have, you're be familiar with demand curves, we're going to think about demand functions. Demand for good X as a function of price X, that's an X, price of other goods like good Y, an individual's income, other characteristics. The Okay, now, but we've been talking about choices under certainty, 
right? I see what tea I can buy. I know what the prices are. Maybe I don't know its quality, but let's, we're ignoring that for now. We're next going to bring in something which I think will be very relevant to those of you, well, to all of you, but especially those of you interested in finance. Choice is under uncertainty. When I make an investment, when I buy, buy insurance, when I take a job, when I come to a university, even when I buy something, perhaps, I don't know exactly what the consequences are. I'm facing many possible consequences. The investment does very well. It does medium. It does poorly with different probabilities. Now, we are going to deal with preferences over certainties, and that will basically extend to utility functions. Then we're going to deal with preferences and attitudes towards uncertainty, thinking about risks and probabilistic outcomes. How do I value one possible combination of probabilistic outcomes over another possible combination? Maybe there's one that seems much safer and one that's much more risky, but maybe yields greater rewards on average. And this has really important, both this has really important implications for financial markets. And the language and way of thinking about this itself are really the building blocks of finance um, and much of economics. Okay, so the third, the third main theme is uncertainty. Probability, we'll deal with one way of dealing with, which is the expected utility framework. Then we're going to consider, okay, we have, imagine we, we know these demand curves, we know how consumers respond. How do firms use that in making their production choices or their product choices and particularly their pricing choices in order to maximize their profits? And we're going to focus on monopoly firms. Uh, and we're going to focus on something that I think is a bit of a hot topic in industry today, which is using segmentation to boost profits. So perhaps a firm finds a way to charge the, the more orange customers more than the blue customers. And that can, in fact, increase its profit. It looks at a, at a client and says, aha, you guys are more orange. You're going to have to pay the higher price. You're blue. You can pay the lower price. That's one form of what economists call price discrimination, but it's, it's a, a segmentation called segmentation in industry. Um, and we're going to look at how firms can do that in ways that maximize its own profit, both separating individuals based on what they look like and getting them to self-select and also think about the implications of that. And then also look at what do firms actually do and what can you do using data? I'm going to try to introduce data to some extent, even though this is a microeconomic theory course. Okay, so the fourth topic was, let's just call it um, profit. This is what we often call pro profit. We use the pi. Profit max, pricing, monopolies, M-O-N-O-P, dot, 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 and segmentation. Okay, and the final topic, uh, that the final key topic is going to be, well, okay, these, this blue guy, we figured out how he, we might figure out how he's going to make the optimal choice over tea and other things that he buys or where he goes shopping. We might know how these orangish guys do that. Um, but perhaps the blue cat's best decision depends on what the orange people do. If they all go to the store, if they all go to store A, store A might be too crowded and he would rather go to store B. On the other hand, if they all went to store B, Store B might be too crowded. Maybe he prefers to go to store A. So we're going to deal with something called uh, strategic interactions, strategic uncertainty. And we're going to use the tools and the language of game theory for that. So what are some problems here? Coordination problems. Which side of the street should I walk on? I don't want to bump into someone. Um, how much should one firm charge for a product that's very similar to another firm's product uh, if they're competing, right? If the other firm charges a lot, maybe I can charge a lot. If he charges a little, maybe I want to charge a little. That would be what we would call, we'll get to it later, strategic um, compliments. Okay, in politics, how much should one political campaign, how much should the liberals invest in a particular district in supporting their candidate how much should the conservatives invest? Again, perhaps strategic compliments. If one invests more, maybe the other wants to invest more, but maybe it goes the other way. Maybe after a certain point, you give up. Uh, some other questions. Um, should I ask my partner to marry me? Uh, maybe it depends on what I think she's going to respond. Is there an advantage or a disadvantage? What about bargaining? 
Should I be the first person to make an offer? We have ways of thinking about that using game theory. Um, okay, should I wear a mask? Now, this is something that they ask us a lot about these days. How can we get people to wear masks? Well, maybe game theory plays a role. Maybe I wear a mask depending on what other people's decisions are. Um, and actually, here we bring in something else other regarding preferences. I may not only be wearing a mask because I care about myself and my own survival and consumption, I may wear a mask because I care about others. And that sort of motivation is one element of what enters into what we'll call behavioral economics. Okay, so we're going to, th that's the, the, the final topic, let's call it strategy and game theory. Sorry, it's a bit hard to write on this board. Game theory. Okay, but throughout this module, through all of these topics, we're going to be considering behavioral economics and a wide range of possible preferences, not just the classical ones. And we're going to be considering applications from the real world, from the laboratory, you know, economics labs and, and experiments. Uh, so we're going to be looking at evidence. And I'm going to try to incorporate real research, academic research, as well as perhaps some professional research. Academic papers will, will involve some of those, some for my own research. Um, as well as helping you to build your research skills, including reading, writing, and summarizing, thinking about modeling, mathematical modeling, writing models and assessing them, critical thinking, questioning the assumptions and the methods, and yeah, considering how do these concepts apply to the real world, and also thinking about research integrity. Uh, when we do research, do we do so in a way that's really trustworthy? Uh, and, and can we lay down standards for that? Okay, so I hope you will find these topics interesting and I'm still uh, making decisions over some of the precise material to involve. So please give me your feedback on things that are more or less interesting to you that you'd like to make sure that I cover.